Hello, welcome to sound painting lesson number two. Okay, uh, we're going to, in this lesson, we're going to deal with slowly exit. And let's talk about what slowly exit is. That's one of the gestures we're going to deal with. But before we get to slowly exit, let's, let, let me say something that you can see that the dancers and actors are seated in their chairs. And one of the reasons for that is that the sound painter, he or she has to say lots of stuff in order to, you know, teach the language. But if the performers that need to get up and stretch, they, they stand behind their chair, you know. But a lot of times when I'm working with dancers and actors and maybe they want to get up for a moment, it's not too long before they're back in the chair because there's so much to speak about. Now, we often start with the dancers and actors and musicians and visual artists. Everybody's in the chair. It's just a kind of a stage picture, a way of a way of showing, um, you know, the homogenous group that everybody's sort of equal in one position. Instead of having the dancers identified in a you know standing a vertical position, or the actors are over here, it's kind of like creating the orchestra look. But of course, sound painters can do as they please. There's there's no nose in sound painting. <laughs> um, and so anyway, we'll get more into that. Like it's the, the stage doesn't always look the same. People are, aren't always seated in an orchestra a set, a situation like that with sort of a chevron look. It's No, it's not always that, but later for that. Um, there's a basic movement rule. So for dancers and actors, or anybody moving in the space out of the chair and moving in the stage area, is what we call the basic movement rule. And that's simply you, the performer. If you see the sign, you do it. And if you don't see it, you continue doing what you're doing. So the sound painter, he or she, is looking for the moment that you see the sign um, or that you don't see it. So imagine there's, a, there's one, actor on, uh, one dancer on the floor and he or she is making kind of a serpent-like motion on the floor going upstage right or something like this. And maybe as the sound painter, I decide to whole group off. Well, the, the, the dancer on the floor making the upstage right realizes that everybody has stopped, but he or she must keep going in this upstage right carving of a line. So, and the reason that I would have chosen to stop everybody, to bring everybody out, was to leave that moment where this person is going upstage right in a serpent-like movement. So you understand it's, it's, it's simply when it comes to composing with movement, uh, the sound painter is looking for when the performers see him or her, or they don't see the phrase. If they see the phrase or they don't see the phrase, that's what, that's what you're looking for. Okay, enough of that, and we'll deal more with that later. Let's get on to the gestures. That's, again, that's what's called the basic movement rule. Uh, if you see it, you do it. If you don't, you keep going. So the gestures we're dealing with in this next section are going to be slowly enter. You take one to five seconds, you the performer, take one to five seconds to enter the composition. And slowly exit. You take one to five seconds to exit the composition. Now, when you in, the, the sound painter is looking for a staggered entrance instead of having a precise entrance with a gesture like play. The sound painter is looking for a staggered entrance. So you, the performer, might come in one time at one second, and then the next time you get signed slowly enter, you know, come in at five seconds. Vary the times that you come in so that the sound painter really receives a staggered entrance, or the opposite of that, the staggered exit. Now, slowly enter or slowly exit has nothing to do with a crescendo to come in or a decrescendo to go out. No, that can be signed. So that's slowly enter, slowly exit. Now the rest of the group, so if we say something like woodwind one, long tone, play, rest of the group, pointillism, the rest of the group is everybody that's not performing. Or another part of the rest of the group, it's everybody that just wasn't just signed. So again, so woodwind, one, long tone, play. Rest of the group, pointillism, play. Now watch this. This is where it gets tricky. We have woodwind, one, playing the long tone. And then our rest of the group is playing pointillism. Now I say 
percussion one who's playing pointillism, because they're part of the rest of the group, percussion one, continue. Now I've said nothing to woodwind one. So when I say rest of the group, rest of the group is everybody that wasn't just signed. So the person that was just signed was percussion one to continue with pointillism. So the rest of the group will include woodwind one. So rest of the group off. That would leave everybody but percussion one who would be playing pointillism. So how do we get woodwind one to continue? Simple. Woodwind one is playing the long tone, right? From our example, for example, woodwind one, long tone, play. Rest of the group, pointillism, slowly enter. Percussion one, continue woodwind one continue the rest of the group off. It's that simple. Each time you want something to continue and then sign rest of the group, that's what you have to do. Um, we'll deal more with that later. It's, it can be, be very complex, but it's a really wonderful way of building different groupings as you're composing in real time. Again, more with that later. Another, well, you saw me say woodwinds, so this is the sign for woodwinds. And uh, this is the sign for brass, by the way. And this is strings. And this is singers. And what am I missing? This is electronics. And you've seen this for percussion. And this is dancers, actors, visual artists, musicians. We have some of this in lesson one, but just to go over it again, and I believe I'm, I'm probably going to post a video that only has, I won't be saying anything, I'm just going to make the signs, uh, just so that there's sort of a glossary of signs you can refer to, and I'll put a link to that on the lesson videos. Um, and the, the gesture continue is really important to understand, so continue, and it just means, say we're going whole group, long tone, pianissimo, play, and I step into the box and bring the dynamic up, bring the amplitude up, this movement going on, and then I say continue. It does not mean to continue this. It means to stay where you are is what continue means in this point, in this instance. Um, the, the next gesture in this section is, um, oh yeah, did I say strings? Yes, I think I said strings and then strings, in case I forgot. The next um, gesture to speak about is relate to. So you say relate to. So you'll see this in the video. It's really important to understand. Let's just say woodwind one plays a long tone, slowly enter, brass one, relate to. It was brass one that relates to woodwind one. Woodwind one's playing a long tone. It's static. It's without development. They're not going to relate to brass one. Woodwind one, woodwind one, long tone, slowly enter, for example. Their, their job is to play a long tone. Now, brass one is given the gesture. So who, brass one, what, relate to? And there's no how in here for this point. I could say pianissimo, but I'm going to leave the how out for now. And say slowly in, yeah, so, sorry, woodwind one, long tone, slowly enter. Brass one, relate to, slowly enter. Now, it's brass one that's relating to woodwind one. Woodwind one is just playing the static long tone. Okay, that's one way of dealing with and working with relate to. Now, relate to can also be that you can have woodwind one and brass one relate to each other. So remember the syntax, who, what, and always when, sometimes how. So who, woodwind one. Who also would be brass one. So the phrase... Now, woodwind one, brass one, relate to. And even without a content, because relate to is a much more open gesture and has a, a, a you know, you can develop as you wish and relate to. It's, it's a sort of a free gesture and you can relate to how you want. It's up to you how you make your relationship. But so woodwind one and brass one are going to find something between each other and start playing. Now, it could be actor one and actor two. You know, actor one. Actor two, relate to. Actor one, two, relate to. You know, 
they're going to find something to do. Now, how they relate to each other is it's wide open. You can be supportive if you're relating to somebody or two people are relating or more are relating. You can be supportive if you want or you can contrast what they're doing. You could be an anarchist and just bury it. Relationship is wide open. It doesn't mean to like, you know, be an to do an accompaniment. It can mean that, but it can also be a contrast. So I'll leave that and let you mull that around that relate to is wide open. And another thing about relate to, just the last point, is in relate to, in our first example, woodwind one, long tone, play, brass one, relate to, slowly enter. Now, if I say woodwind one, off, brass one was relating to woodwind one, but woodwind one's not playing. So what does brass one, what does the brass one do? Brass one can either continue to play based on what was played and even where they think it might be going, where it's been, where it was, etc. Or they can stop on their own without a sign from the sound painter. Now, that may not make a lot of sense in music, but it makes a lot of sense in theater and in dance for someone to relate to a body that's gone silent. I'll leave it at that for now, but uh, but that's the reason relate to is wide open. A lot of the sound painting gestures don't come from the from the music world or the theater world or the dance world. It's a real mixture about where they come from and how I created them. There's all kinds of concepts that uh, I looked at and said, "Ah, I'm gonna make a gesture from that." You know, so that's not not necessarily anything to do with the music world. So relate to is is how it is because of how it works across the disciplines. So, enough talking, let's go to the, the performance.
Okay, so what happened? <clears throat> you saw that in Relate To, like there was a time where uh, Violin and Woodwind were going to Relate and they took their time getting going. So when you give a slowly enter gesture, they have one to five seconds to, to get started. Um, so sometimes it takes time if you're going like, you know, Woodwind 1, string one, in this case a violin and an alto saxophone, relate to, you know, and they they took their time finding their way into it. That's uh, that's absolutely correct. Uh, but it should happen within one to five seconds. They should start within one to five seconds because it's slowly entered. You'll notice that I, I'm leaving the dancers and the actors in the chairs. Um, this is just what we call a default at this point, that, that they remain in their chairs, that they don't, in relate to, when I'm giving a dancer relate to, they're not getting up out of their chair and relating by moving in the space. Now, that's what's called a default. And the default in this case is that they remain in their chairs. In, an, in another lesson later on in the series of lessons, I'll speak about what are called defaults and neutrals. You know, this, this has to do with dancers and actors and moving in the space, but later with that. <clears throat> um, so the next, in the next section, in the, the next performance uh, of the gestures that you will see, uh, you're going to see the gesture groups. Groups. Let me stand up. So groups. Like, so you can, you can, you can say... You can uh, assign ahead of time in in uh, in your rehearsal. You would you would sign assign ahead of time the groups. Like maybe you have two groups, like group one and group two. But you might have group three, etc., etc., etc. That's done ahead of time, uh, usually in rehearsal. So that's for groups. So we have whole group. We have rest of the group. We have all the different families in all the different disciplines and families and whatnot. So these are all identifiers, way of identifying people. And so you can say group one, you know, for example, some really interesting things compositionally, you could say group one, long tone, slowly enter, group two, pointillism, slowly enter, etc. Group one, you know, pitch up, you know, volume up, down, continue, group two, off, so there's all kinds of ways of, of, you know, as the sound painter, as the composer, of going back and forth between groups and creating layers. So leave that to your imagination. So that's how you work with groups. And usually they're assigned ahead of time, as I was saying. Um, <clears throat> another gesture is minimalism. Let me get up to show you this one. Minimalism, like an M. You can see that my arms are making like an M, like this is the legs of the M, the letter M. So minimalism. And sometimes I'm saying, you know, watch me. I might give you four beats to get started, and I'll count in a four pattern, and then they'll start and build their minimalism around my pulse. Um, or I could say whole group minimalism, slowly enter, and you choose the tempo that you create your minimalism in. So what is minimalism? Minimal, minimalism is the repetition for musicians, the repetition of three or four notes, you know. And you can choose whatever time signature you want to be in from, say, you know, from 2-4 to 7-4, so to speak, with a feeling of 2 up to a feeling of 7. Beyond that, it becomes more complex and gets more into what we call maximalism. 
So you repeat, you choose your two or three notes, and you repeat them over and over and over without development. Without, that's what a musician does. An actor is repeating words, two or three words, or text sounds, you know, word sounds. But mainly words, over and over and over, those same two or three words. Uh, and a dancer is repeating two or three short movements, you know, just something simple. You know, and you're keeping, the sound painter might be keeping the pulse for you, or it might be your own pulse, as I was saying in the two examples. You can either follow the pulse of the sound painter if it's indicated, or the sound painter might give you just minimalism, slowly enter, and you choose your pulse, and you maintain it, and you do not develop the material. So this is what an actor and a dancer and a musician are doing with minimalism. Now, while minimalism is going on, let's say that we've signed a whole group minimalism. You know, we get four beats to get started if we want to do it that way. And you're keeping a pulse. Now you want to change this minimalism to a new cycle. You can mo you modify what you're doing or change to something brand new. So the sound painter holds up a change gesture while keeping the pulse. And then maybe gives a couple of beats, steps into the box, and initiate when to make the change. So the change is not to happen until the sound painter gives a pulse or gives when to make the change. So that's really important. You don't take the change gesture and push it into the box like that. No, the change gesture is signed in neutral, and then you give a couple of beats and you make the change. You indicate the change where it's supposed to be. Okay, so that's minimalism, the repetition of, it's, a, it's cyclical. It's, it's in, a, in a pulse, either the pulse of the sound painter or the, or the inner pulse of the performer. It depends on how it's signed. Now, um, a really interesting gesture, a combination of gestures. First of all, this means this is. That's the material that's going on at the time. This is. So let's say that we have a long tone, whole group long tone, pianissimo, slowly enter. Now what's going on is this is, but this is what I'm getting at. We're going to say that this is what you're performing, the, you the performer, memory one. This is memory one. Now the job of the performers is to memorize the material that's being performed. A memory can be, can, you, can, you as the sound painter can call any material being performed to be a memory. It could be something from minimalism. That could, you know, like a, a minimalistic cycle that's going on. You could call that memory one. And you can have more than, maybe, maybe for example, whole group minimalism, you know, and I give a couple beats and they start playing. And I say continue. They continue with it without me. And then, I'm, you know, I, I would say this is memory one. Now I have that first cycle, this minimalism cycle, as memory one. Right? Now I say whole group long tone, they're still playing, they're still playing the, the uh, minimalism, still playing it, still playing it. This is just preparation. I step in the box and give the play gesture. Now they go to the long tone. The group goes to the long tone. Now I say this is memory two, for example. Right? Now I want to go back to memory one. I say memory one, since memory one was minimalism, it's a good idea to help them out. So I give a couple of beats, and we're, you, the performers go, play exactly what they were playing when you assign when you sign memory one. Now they're doing memory one, you want to go to memory two. But when I was talking about groups before, maybe we'll just have group two go to memory two. So group one, just remind them, continue. And now group two, memory two, slowly enter. Now we have group one in minimalism. While group two is slowly enter, entering with the long tone. Okay, so you see, this is a little reiteration of what groups are and how to use them and what minimalism is. And um, 
let's see, the, the last sign before we go to the uh, performance of the gestures, the last sign is called layer. Now, uh, layer, what is a layer? A layer, the rule in sound painting is, is when you, let's just say we have the whole group play in a long tone, right? Okay, imagine that. The whole group is playing a long tone. Now layer, now I want to use scanning, right? I want to use scanning now. Now a mistake would be to say, now the long tone's going on, right? We said whole group long tone play, they're playing it, right? Now I said whole group scanning while the long tone's going on. I haven't said anything about what to do with the long tone. So it becomes very confusing for the performers to understand, well, what do I do with the long tone when the scanning arm passes by? Do I stop? Do I change the long tone? What do I do? So this is the reason that layer exists. It's very important to learn layer, and it's called layer scanning, which is, or layer point to point. So let me explain. Uh, so, well, I am explaining, but let me go a little deeper now. So we have the long tone going on, right? Whole group, long tone, play. Now I want to use scanning. So I'm going to go whole group layer. This is a gesture for layer. Layer scan. Now the group is playing a long tone. Let's just imagine you're playing a long tone too as a performer. So now I pass by. And now the moment that my arm lines up with you, you perform normal scanning. You know, you choose what you want to do and you develop it slowly. And then as my arm passes by, you go back to the long tone, the original long tone. Because I'm adding a second layer and I'm covering up the first layer. So, does that make sense? I'm, the group is making a long tone. And then I want to use scanning. So I say layer scan because the whole group is playing a long tone. Now as I pass by each performer, they play the scan, but go back to the long tone. Play the scan, go back to the long tone. Play the scan, go back to the long tone. Each person is playing the scan, is playing scanning, and going back to the long tone. I'm adding the second layer with scanning. So you can also do it another way. So imagine this. I could say whole group, long tone. I'll be, I'll sound paint myself. You go, Ooh. No, not that, 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 no, not that. Ooh. Do you get it? <laughs> you get that one? I added a, a layer of minimalism on top of the long tone. It covered up the long tone, but it was still there. It was underneath. It was a layer. Layers like looking down on a cake. It's not seeing the cake from the side and seeing both layers. You don't play them both at the same time. Layer is building up in this conception the sound painter is looking down. You can only see the layer that's coming at you. Now we're getting complicated, right? So even though we call this basic sound painting, it's parts of it are not so basic. So just learn that if you, if, just understand that if the group is performing something and you want to use scanning or point to point while the whole group is performing a long tone or pointillism or whatever, if you want to use another gesture, while that's happening, like using point-to-point -point or scanning, then you must layer it so that they go back to what they were doing before. So layer point-to-point -point exists, layer scanning exists, and the example I just made of you know layering uh, minimalism on top of long tone, but that doesn't happen as often. Okay, so um, what was I going to so explain something else to you? But I think uh, we'll leave it at that because it's getting kind of complicated. I would suggest that you watch this over and over and over again. And if you have any questions, of course, um, you can write me directly at you know, info at soundpainting.com. Say, oh, I got questions. I don't understand that. But there are sound painting workbooks that explain this and, and um, 
DVDs that come with it, etc., etc. So this, if you're a little confused about any aspect of the sound painting language, then please feel free to uh, to contact me. And now, so let's go to the the performance of the gestures. Okay, so we're not going to go right to the performance of the gestures yet, uh, because I forgot something that's very important uh, in the uh, in the performance of the gestures. One gesture called shape line. So let me show it to you. So you would say like whole group, shape line, you're in the neutral position, and then when you, you're going to see in the video that I move forward in the box and I make different shapes, and the performers make a relationship. They're inspired by the lines I'm drawing with my body, sort of a living graphic notation, if you will. It doesn't mean they have to, like, exactly follow what I'm doing. They can leave space in there. There can even be a sense of contrast. You don't have to be sort of like a glissando type of, like, whoa. It doesn't have to be that. That can be one choice. But it can also be some silence left in there, like, ba da da boom ba da boom When you go back to neutral, it, it indicates silence. And each time you move into the box to do something else, the group follows. Back to neutral to establish silence or stillness concerning movement. And then we use the watch me gesture to cancel shape line. This is the only way to exit, to get out of shape line. We use the watch me gesture. If you don't use the watch me gesture, then, you take, then there's the risk of, like if you do shape line, and then you move into the box and you make different shapes, and then you come back out into neutral, and you raise your hands for whole group, there's, the, there's a real big risk. The group's going to go, whoa, with you. They'll play your, your whole group gesture. So when you want to cancel shape line after using it, come into, go back to neutral and bring the watch me gesture up really slowly. Okay, so now let's go to the performance of the gestures.
Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for lesson two. Um, I just want to mention one thing before I say goodbye, is that I use the improvised gesture. I didn't speak about this before you saw the video of the performance of the, of the gestures. Improvise. So I looked at trumpet one. I believe that's what I signed. Brass one. Improvise. And the brass player um, was improvising. And I did rest of the group shape line. Now, so the, what, the point I'm getting at is, is here is the, is the usage of the improvised gesture. When you ask somebody to improvise, that's a full-blown improvisation. That person is probably going to give blood to the composition. They're really going to like put themselves into it. That's the space where the improviser, the soloist, just goes with what they would like to do. Now, in sound painting, for the respect of the improviser, we don't cut them off or say slowly exit. There's only one gesture you use, and this is only used, except for one other case, and we'll speak about that much later. So if I said, like I said, brass, Brass one, improvise, slowly enter, and I believe it was Raphael Arditi playing a beautiful solo. I believe it was Raphael, and um, she was playing, and at one point, I would say, brass one, finish your idea. So this gesture is finish your idea. It's reserved. <laughs> it's only given to the soloist, the improviser. And it gives them as much as a minute and a half to finish what they're doing, to bring it to a natural conclusion. Now, an improviser can also stop, on, stop by themselves without a gesture from the sound painter. It's one of the exceptions in sound painting where the improviser, if they feel like their improvisation is over just after one minute, they can stop, of course, and wait for the... Next gesture, not stop and then join what's going on, but just stop the, oh, I'm done with my improvisation. I feel I'm done as the performer, so I stop. I'm not forced to keep performing the gesture if it doesn't fit how I'm feeling as the soloist. So again, the improviser, uh, the soloist, will receive this gesture, finish your idea. Now, if you sign the whole group to improvise, you know, you could get quite the lugubrious mess. <laughs> but nonetheless, it can be an interesting way to generate material. Now, in this case, I can say slowly exit or cut them off, cut everybody off, uh, because it's there's less than in, less invested when you invested in the moment. Uh, but when you ask for a soloist, to, you know. Brass one, improvise. You want to give them the respect and give them finish your idea so that they can wrap it up. So sort of the rule in sound painting is if you have one person improvising and then you ask for another soloist, then that's about it. Then you'd want to use this. But if you start getting to three and four and five or six soloists, then, you know, I usually use slowly exit because at that point, it's less of a soloist road. Solo, meaning only, <laughs> right? So it's not so only anymore of this. I consider in sound painting of this one or two, that's still only. But going beyond that, it becomes, uh, uh, becomes more collective. And then that way I'll use this. So, and then the last thing just to point out that in the video you saw pitch up. I believe it was pitch up. And I said slowly enter to have a staggered raising of the pitch. You know, you could do this, where it's this group and that group, and you do slowly enter. Really interesting way of doing it. Uh, and, I mean, you can use, of course, the play gesture for the immediate change, or you can say slowly enter for the staggered entrance of the change. So that's it, and um, I will see you uh, for lesson three.